Hi, I'm Sherry Carabin. Getting enough sleep is one of the keys to maintaining both physical and mental health. The National Sleep Foundation advises adults to get between seven and nine hours per night, and babies, young children, and teenagers need even more. But many of us don't even come close to those numbers. Jersey City Medical Center sleep specialist, Dr. Jyoti Mata discusses sleep deprivation what you can do to get a good night's rest. Sleep deprivation is huge. You know, a vast majority of us, even just what we call normal folks, working folks in the country suffer from sleep deprivation. Another thing with sleep deprivation is something we see across all age groups. You know, you see these young children in middle school and high school stretching their limits, sitting on their phones um, late into the night, not getting the required number of hours of sleep. As adults, sometimes, you know, we tend to sit on our phones and our computers. We catch up with life at the end of a busy day of work and not end up getting the right number of hours of sleep. Now, it's not that, you know, we, so say we need an X number of hours, but we get X minus one, that debt adds up along the course of the week. So start with Monday and go on to Friday. By Saturday, most of us are chronically sleep deprived. We are essentially a sleep deprived nation. And you know, the one recommendation really is to use sleep, um, you know, to consider sleep a priority. And I can't emphasize enough because sleep deprivation not only leads to fatigue, it leads to uh, you know, not performing well on the job. It leads to aggravation of depression. It leads to aggravation of anxiety, aggravation of any other mental illness that there possibly is. It leads to weight gain, and we also know statistically sleep deprivation over time predisposes to early mortality. People can die before their time just by the fact of being sleep deprived. Now, do we have professions that require folks to be sleep deprived? Yes, there are people that have to do two jobs to make ends meet. There are people that have to go against their circadian rhythm and do evening shifts and night shifts, and that contributes to sleep deprivation. But there's lots of different ways of addressing those issues. Fix bedtime, fix wake time, have a little sort of downtime drill prior to bedtime, which is complete relaxation for 30 minutes. Stay away from the blue light, no computers, no phones. Keep a worry diary next to you. If there's things on your mind, try to make a note, for, you know, note of them. And decide for yourself that, that these are not issues that the next seven hours or eight hours um, you're going to use to deal with. You know, so for instance, there's an important meeting the next day, there's something an individual is stressed about, there's nothing they can do about it, you know, for those seven hours. And that's what I call a worry diary. Worry diary, dot, you know, jots everything down uh, to be addressed the next morning. Um, bedroom environment should be quiet as possible. It should be dark as possible. You know, shades to cover the morning sun, set an alarm, turn the clock away. You don't have to look at the clock all night long. The alarm will wake you up. And if you're not ready to go to bed, if you're not sleepy, you're not tired, you're tossing and turning, walk out of the bedroom, sit outside in the living room, meditate, read something, come back to the bed when you're tired and sleepy.